Hi, I'm Ian, and this is the Concept Kit Plugin Workflow Series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to manually adjust an end display config for use with single machine and also for multiple machine and or node systems. So at this point, I'm going to assume that you've already gone through uh, the first video uh, in my series that talks about uh, just setting up the initial plugin, enabling everything, and then doing a end display baseline test. Uh, hopefully we have gone through that fairly quickly and it was nice and easy for you. This may be a little harder to understand or wrap your head around and Hopefully I'll do a good enough job of explaining it that it won't be too complicated. Once you get it, you really just get it. Uh, you'll be like, oh, okay. So this is the end display config for uh, the workflow that I use. There's different ways to do it. I'm going to show you the way that I know how and explain this stuff the best that I can based on my experience. And I didn't build the thing. It's not my program. I'm just going to show you how I use it. Uh, okay, so first off, we have cluster node. This is how many, this is an end display run. So this is the editor opening up and, and bringing up your project and then displaying whatever your, uh, your, uh, your world, however you have your end display screen mesh and everything uh, set up. So every time you run one of these, uh, you are, you know, you're, you're, you're opening up a whole nother, you're running a whole nother video game. You're running a whole nother, uh, editor in play, which is going to use a lot of performance. So usually, uh, this is what you use to separate your nodes. So if you have multiple of these, we're going to start with just one right now talking about it. Uh, and then we're going to add another one when we get into multi-node, uh, workflow. Uh, so within each node, you have a window. I like to think of the window as the, the wall that holds up the windows into virtual world. Uh, they are, they're the canvas and then your viewports are the actual painting on the canvas. You can only have one window, uh, per node. And so within the window here, we have uh, the window ID, which has to match with your node here. Uh, so if you have multiple nodes, you need multiple windows and multiple window IDs. Uh, and then you have what is being rendered inside of this window as a viewport. And we have the RTT inner, which is the frustum. I will talk more about that once I get down there. Uh, and then I have the viewport, which is the, the actual render that we are putting on the screen inside of the window and then full screen. So, uh, I generally like to use full screen as false, but I have run into the occasional situation where, uh, maybe the led wall pixel, uh, scaling is not perfect and you're sending it slightly less pixels than it's displaying. And then you have like a white line at the bottom or like whatever your background image is, uh, is, is under underneath the screen and it's very visible. So, uh, in those cases you can change this to true. Sometimes if you're getting crashes and you don't know why, uh, this is, you may want to change this to true, uh, just to see if you're making your window bigger than the windows window. Uh, so now we're going to get into where these things actually live in window space. Uh, so in window X zero, we are at the top left corner of our first screen in windows. And then if you go to, if you go to your display settings and you look, I have two windows right now. You look here, so this is the screen that I'm on. This is zero. And then this would be whatever the size of this screen is across. And then this screen will start at whatever the resolution of this was. And that will be that screen zero. So 
uh, if we wanted to offset our window to start on our second screen. So if we had a projector or a secondary screen or an LED wall and we didn't want it to render on our working screen, we would have to put whatever the resolution of our working screen is here and it will start there. Uh, and then pretty self-explanatory, this is the resolution of it. So this is how many pixels it's going to take up. So uh, sometimes when you're working with LED walls uh, and you're not the person that kind of runs the processor or understands it and you're just focusing on uh, just the, the in-camera VFX with Unreal and the VP Toolkit uh, stuff, you, you're going to have to get this information from them because they may be scaling it or changing it. You need to just understand it should be pixel for pixel. So if you have a 4K wall, this would be 4K and whatever height uh, the, the, the ratio is. So for right now, I'm, I'm just the resolution of my screen, uh, but zoomed in, which I hope that's not too confusing. So it's this times two. Uh, and then, so that is setting the area, the canvas for us to, uh, to, to, to send viewports. So sometimes you, you know what I mean? You can have you could have multiple viewports in one window. So say if you had an LED wall processor that's, you know, two LED walls, or you had two screens that are apart from each other or whatever, you can represent that by putting one window and uh, two viewports in it. Uh, so with the viewports, you have your viewport ID, which has to uh, match with whatever your you're putting into your window. And then you also have an offset here. This is similar to the Windows uh, offset, but this is for moving it. Uh, so if you had one viewport that started at the beginning of a window, at the far left top corner at the zero point of a window, and then you had another viewport that was starting at the beginning of the end of that first viewport, then you would just have to put the width of the first viewport. I hope that's not too confusing. Uh, and then this zero point is the zero point of the window, not of window space. So it's like, yeah, you get it. Uh, and then here's the resolution of it. If you want it to fill the entire window or the entire screen, uh, you will put a, you know, whatever resolution that is. And that's what we're doing here. And then we have the projection type, which I'm not going to get too deep into, but that's represented here. So if you need to do uh, mul multiples of these, I found once in a while, and uh, if you're doing it correctly, but every once in a while I've run into a situation where I've had to make multiples of these and name them differently. So you'd do, you'd change the ID, uh, maybe to like copy and paste it and then make it two. And then that would have to be represented here. Uh, but I believe, just leaving as one works in most scenarios. Uh, and then we have the, the same thing for the in-camera. I'm not going to get too deep into this because if you're using this workflow, you're just not going to be changing these things. Um, but if you want to dive further in, I would recommend t uh, checking out the Unreal Engine uh, documentation on their config. Uh, I will have a link in the description. Now that we've kind of gone over the basics of a single node setup, I'm going to show you how to make a multi-node setup if you want to do two viewports or uh, render on multiple machines. I'm going to give you a quick little instruction on how to do that. Uh, so I'm just going to get into it. So I'm going to set this up like I'm, I want to render on this screen on this computer and then I also want to render on a different screen on another computer but I'm just going to show you how to do it because I don't want to actually set up two uh, machines right now. Now we know that this is our end display fire. So this is our node. This is basically generally you want to keep that you can you can render multiples of these on one machine but uh, only one of them will be able to get the performance of the machine and you'll definitely 
uh, lose performance by having two running. So normally you'll split these between multiple computers. Uh, so to do that, uh, I'm just going to copy this section and then paste it below it. And then I'm going to change this to node two. And then uh, I'm going to, I'm not actually going to change this cause I'm not going to do it, but you would have the IP address of your first machine. And then you'd have the IP address of your second machine here. And then uh, once this one says true master, you can just have nothing here and you can add sound true if you'd like, but I generally don't just to keep things clean. So now uh, we're going to have to create a window two. So we can just copy this entire thing. Control C. And then Control V. And then name this one window two. And then I'm going to make a viewport two. Uh, and then show you how that, how we're going to add that actually into uh, end display. So now I'm going to just pretend that my other screen that I'm my other computer or my other node and my other machine is the same screen resolution as this one with no offset. Uh, but if you have to change anything custom to that computer, you're just going to have to figure it out. So now I'm going to make a, another viewport. I'm going to name that viewport two to match with this guy here. So we're starting a window that has viewport two in it. And these both have the frustum in them. Uh, it's just that when the frustum goes over top of it, it will get uh, rendered in this viewport. And then you will not have to make a copy of this uh, because you only have one frustum, even if you have multiple uh, viewports. So now, now that you've changed the config file, you're going to have to make sure that uh, that now lines up with your end display blueprint. Uh, in this setup, if you're using the VP Toolkit plugin workflow that uh, this video series is designed around, uh, you should have the BP in camera stage pawn. And if you go to the details panel, you'll see uh, how this is viewport one. And then we have this set to, whoops, we have this set to be the screen mesh. So what it's doing is it's going to use this material right here uh, as a, as its view into the virtual world. So now that we have, now that we're rendering two nodes, we're going to make two meshes. So I'm just holding alt and then clicking over to, uh, to make a duplicate of this. And I'm just going to put it right here. Uh, say that this is LED walls. Uh, I'm going to be making a, a, an entire video on how to measure and place these for uh, different setups, including multi-node. So uh, bear with me if you want more details of that and get into the other video. Now we're going to want to go to our BP in-camera stage pawn and create another warp mapping. So I'm going to go VP2, and that is going to match with our uh, what we've created in our config file. And then I'm going to set that to... Okay, so this is a good, good learning moment. So when I made a duplicate of that screen, uh, it did not duplicate into the level that we're in, since the main level that we're currently in is independent of our stage. So they're, they're two separate levels and we're just streaming this one uh, at all times. So they, they stream at the same time. So you can load your end display settings in that level. Uh, so what do we need to do is we need to go to move selected actors to level. And then now we can connect that to our uh, 
BP in camera pawn because this is going to be the zero point that uh, that thing that your screen mesh uh, generates its position from. Uh, so we want it connected to there. So if we move around, it won't uh, it won't leave us. Uh, like I said, well, I'll be getting more into that with my other video specifically on screen meshes. So now we want to go to the in camera stage pawn and set that second screen mesh. So now uh, we can take these and we can rename them. If you wanted to make them viewport one, viewport two, so they specifically match up here, you can. If it's like LED wall left, LED wall right, you can, you can name that here. Uh, but for right now, I'm going to leave it just like that. So now you should be able to save your project, make sure that you have your config file saved, and open up your end display launcher and fire, which actually I could show you. Let's just give that a try. So you can see that it, it runs twice now. If it doesn't crash. Okay, so now you can see we have the view of uh, the first mesh and the view of the second mesh, both on my one screen. So if I go to this one, I can see it. And then here. And then uh, in your situation, if you're doing multi-node, uh, you would see these on different computers. Uh, but always make sure that you have it tabbed over because sometimes when you have a computer uh, with no screen uh, in these in these systems, you may be getting pretty complicated. You may have one that has no screen. You want to make sure that you're tabbed over to it once it's fired up. Little thing that I run into very often. So that's a general overview of a multi-node setup. Thank you for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please subscribe, and if you'd like, go to vp-toolkit.com to get more information and find more resources on in-camera VFX workflows.